Well, 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 look who it is. We need you back. Things just haven't worked out with Christian Matt. Hmm. People didn't take to him, did they? Oh no, people love him. Some people want him to replace you full time. Then what's the problem? Yeah, uh, there was... You expect me to review talking vegetables? Talking... The Lord would never create such an abomination. This is, this is heresy. This is blasphemy. Vegetables do not have souls. Creative differences. You're too late, man. The mat you want isn't here anymore. I don't care, man. I just need a warm body to sit in the chair. Why don't you do it? You're literally identical to me. Well, I'd just rather have the original back, you know? And you're willing to accept a little change? Sure, fine. Whatever you want. <clears throat> Being angry is a young man's game. It's time for a more peaceful, loving era of Matt's Funtime Weird Movie Show. What movie are we talking about? Evil Bong High Five. This is why you didn't want to do it, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. With peace of mind and love in my heart, let's watch this piece of shit. There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matt, sad little Matt. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode, Evil Bong High Five. <sighs> Hello, Internet. I'm called Matt, and we're back with the damn Evil Bong series. Evil Bong High Five is made by the same people as the last movie. And with that, let's get into Evil Bong High Five. We open where the last movie, well, not really ended, just sort of stopped. With everyone trapped in the Bong world, which does at least look the same as it did last movie, the first time Bong world has ever been consistent. It's made out of all locally grown fabric. Hemp, naturally. It's the tops, V. Get it? Man, even my jokes are super lame now. Aw, oh, Larnell. Your jokes were always lame. And like, I suppose I've seen worse green screen, but... This was made by the producer of Reanimator, not some guy working out of his basement. This is inexcusable. It's been six months and they've tried everything to get out of Bong World to no avail. They consider asking Rabbit for help, but apparently the character who escaped on his own last movie wants to stay here this movie. But he does reveal his secret method of escape, completely clearing his mind of any thoughts. He calls it Nothing Head. Which I'm pretty sure is also how this movie was written. I thought you were being kinder and more loving. It's Evil Bong 5. Believe me, this is much kinder than I could be. Rabbit is playing Twister with a naked woman, but really doesn't seem to understand the point of Twister with a naked woman, as he's just calling out the spots and isn't tangled up with her. And Ginger's a little too into the voyeurism. Oh, hello, Misa. <laughs> Not a problem, pal. At least out there in that cruel, cruel world, we have a chance to one day... I got nothing. I think it says something about this series that the lead character can't think of a single thing to do. On the other hand, Rabbit was running a topless bowling alley. I think he'd at least want to get back to that. Although, come to think of it, didn't the whole bowling alley come with them? Where are the other girls? Or Hambo? Or that racist Chinese character? Actually, you know what? He can stay. Okay, okay. Positive thoughts. They still have the good theme song. In the morning, in the night, when I don't feel so right. Up through the misty haze, the green will brighten up my days. For real, this song is on my weed playlist. It's a bop. 
Luckily for them, EB's plan for world domination involves Larnell and Rabbit going to sell weed in the real world. And she's brought topless ladies to make sure they don't pull anything funny. My man. Er, dong. Two topless chicks is gonna move a lot more product than two idiots you already don't trust. Although I'm, I'm a little unclear on who the women in Bong World are. Are these souls she has trapped, or are these just women she is conjuring purely in the Bong World that could never be in the physical world? Then in a more touching moment, Sarah reveals she's knitted a karate outfit for the cookie who murdered her family and has tried at least three times to kill her. Like, seriously, I think they've forgotten Ginger was supposed to be a villain. Mind if I cut in? Be rude not to. Also, is EB into, like, Buddhism? Or is she just trying to get that real stoner aesthetic? I mean, there's an Alan Watts book within reach of me. I, I can't even act like that's unfounded. Wouldn't be a full moon movie without a pointless exterior shot. And here's a beautiful shot. Ginger using a phone that was out of date in 2016 when this came out, with the receiver nowhere near his mouth so we can see a picture of What's-Her-Face which probably wouldn't come up on his phone when he called her. Whatever, she's here now to tease us but not get topless. This was really a character worth bringing back. But you know who was a character worth bringing back? Larnell's grandfather from the first two movies. You are the drippings from under the titty bar table. Except, uh, didn't he used to be wheelchair bound? Whatever, he dips pretty quick and that's all we see of him. And then those two racist guys from the last movie show up. Although, I was pretty sure one of them was dead. But I just got a horrible premonition. This movie's just gonna be cameo characters popping in and out of the store, isn't it? Of course, they only have a little bit of change, which won't get them any weed, but then they just... leave the change? That's all your money, man. Although this lady they're with seems like she needs something a little stronger than weed. We wanna get fucked up real bad. And just as I feared, Hambo drops in, does nothing funny, and leaves. But not before a commercial for Full Moon's figurines. Badass dolls. Collect them all? Or look like a piece of shit? I believe you mean and look like a piece of shit. Who's our next cameo? Ah, David Dakota. Remember when that was funny? Ginger has a dream about having sex. I have no grander point about this, I just wanted you to know it happened. And here's those two unfunny stoner guys from last movie. And here's the unfunny stoner guy who reviewed the last movie. Meanwhile, Sarah and Velicity have turned things around with the Punishers. Well, this is an awakening. Good for her. This guy comes in and I don't think he's a cameo, but he could be from a full moon movie I've never seen. Wouldn't surprise me either way. Ginger's upset because, uh... Candy! The girl I great fired at the bowling alley! What about her? Uh, well... I never told anybody this, but... She was my first. Well, that's simply not true! He had sex in the third Ginger Dead Man movie and Ginger Dead Man vs. Evil Bong. Plus, you know, this character was Gary Busey in the first film. And that dude fucks. Take me to your weeder! I'm joked would've worked better in the third movie. You know, the one with aliens. I reviewed the third movie, right? Finally, they're out of cameos, so we can wrap this up. Rabbit and Larnell have, naturally, failed to get EB's money, but the girls managed to sneak out of Bong World behind EB. And those racist guys show back up with just enough money. Although I'm not really sure why that money is for evil purposes and EB is gonna get defeated before she can use it. And then Rabbit does nothing head so well he sucks EB into the rabbit world? Along with Larnell and Ginger? Thus setting up Evil Bong 666. And that's Evil Bong High Five. It's better than part four, but then again, so are most things. 
There is no reason for this movie to exist. They ran out of ideas a long time ago. This series has sucked itself into a spiral of self-references and racist caricatures. There's not even any horror elements to it. This is basically the worst sitcom you've ever seen. This one is at least less obnoxious than its predecessor, but that's mainly just because this movie makes me feel nothing. And Rabbit may find enlightenment from nothing, but I'd rather watch a movie. There it is. I reviewed an entire Evil Bong movie without getting angry. I wasn't particularly happy either, but that's to be expected. I'm really tired of this series. I'm ready for it to be over. Oh, come on. You know you can't end the series there. <sighs> yeah... you. Still wallowing in your squalor and delving in dubious acts like a pulsating boil on a viper's vagina. I want to talk about how this figure is almost conspicuously designed to not be used as a bong. Like there's a hole in the front here and it seems to be plugged up with a rubber stopper and maybe some hot glue and they drilled a hole in the bottom. Like, it's very clear this was not a natural hole. They drilled that in there. Almost like the original design for these was a little too bongy, and they're like, hmm, better change that just enough that we don't get in trouble. It's not a bong. You can't smoke out of it. <laughs>